Exodus chapter 23. We'll begin reading in verse number 20. The Bible says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites uh, and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful you're our God. You're faithful and true, and your mercies are renewed every day. And God, we're thankful that, Lord, we are certainly reaping far better than we sown. We do not deserve and are not worthy to even be called by thy name, but God, we're thankful we can be because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, us who one time were off uh, outside the grace of God have been drawn nigh because of the precious work of Christ in our lives. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd bless those working with the children on the other side. Bless those working with the teens as well. Now, Father, help us now to glean from the Word of God. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for thy people that have uh, weathered the elements and weathered the sickness to be able to come out to the house of God tonight. Now, God, I pray you'd bless them and help them for it. I pray for those that are sick. I pray for those that are providentially hindered, that are watching. God, you'd be with them. You'd help them. You'd strengthen them. And God, you'd bring them back to us safely soon. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd continue to range the atmosphere. You'd come and bring down the mountains and come down and meet with us. Uh, and God, do a work in our hearts. And we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for all that you do. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. Here we find that God is giving Moses some instructions before their conquest, before they go into Canaan land, uh, and before God gives them the promised land that he had promised to them many years before, and Israel, uh, because of fear, would not go in. Can I say, uh, fear is the enemy of faith, uh, and when you are motivated by fear, friend, uh, uh, you will not have the blessings of God in your life. But when you follow God by faith, uh, there's nothing impossible before you because God uh, is able to bring down anything that you face. Uh, too many times we uh, get to looking around instead of looking up. It'll be a good day in your life when you learn to look up and put your faith and trust in God. Notice some things that God tells Moses here uh, and some things that we can glean from for our own lives. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the principles set before them. Look at verse number 20 again. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I prepare. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, uh, for he will not pardon your transgressions, uh, for my name is in him. There is a principle set before them. We sing a hymn uh, says, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Uh, but to trust and obey. Uh, we're not to question what God's doing. Uh, we're just to be obedient to what God's doing. Uh, when he uh, uh, puts uh, something before us, just be obedient, follow God, uh, uh, put your faith in what God says, and God will handle the rest. Uh, 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 don't uh, uh, ignore God. Don't be disobedient to God. Uh, if so, he won't pardon your transgressions. So we find a principle set before them. Now, I want you to notice the picture displayed from them. Look again at verse number 20. He says, Behold, I send an angel. Do you see that? Mm, if you look down at verse 23, it says, For mine angel. Do you see that? In both instances, if you've got the right Bible, angel is capitalized. 
Any time in the Old Testament when you find the angel of the Lord, that is the Lord Jesus himself being manifested in the Old Testament. That's why it's capitalized. It's talking about Jesus himself. He goes on to say that he won't forgive your transgressions. Who can forgive sin except God himself? So he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, this uh, uh, angel to us, it's a picture for us in this dispensation. Uh, it's a picture of the Holy Ghost to guide us. The Holy Ghost, uh, he indwells us uh, and he leads us and guides us into all truth. Why do you think the scriptures say we're not to grieve him or quench him? We're to be obedient to, to the voice of God through the person of the Holy Spirit. Notice he not only mentions angel in verse number 20, I'll send an angel before thee. He says to keep thee in the way. The way here represents or is a picture to us the paths of righteousness to ready us. God grows us in the scriptures and he teaches us to walk in righteousness that we might be ready for what he has, has on down the road. If we're not living a righteous life, God cannot use us. It's very important. We, we were teaching in our Sunday school class this morning on the whole armor of God. The very first uh, piece of armor is uh, uh, you are to gird up your loins with truth. Uh, truth is our foundation. If we don't have truth, we don't have anything. That's why we herald uh, uh, the King James Bible. It's the absolute final authority of our lives. Without it, uh, 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 friends, we don't have a leg to stand on. Uh, so we find that uh, uh, truth was for uh, our most sensitive, our most tender parts, but the very next thing it says is the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, what covers our heart is righteousness. Uh, and friend, uh, truth does us no good if we don't have a righteous life. It's just like somebody sitting on a bar stool getting drunk, telling folks that Jesus will save them. He's telling them the truth. But his life is not a righteous life, so it will not give them any incentive to do what he's saying to do. And he's being a hypocrite. And can I say, there's a lot of people that tell folks truth, but their life doesn't back it up. Can I say that the way shows that there are paths of righteousness to ready us for what God has in store for us. And then it mentions a prepared place. Now, we know Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, and I'm looking forward to heaven, but the prepared place that is pictured in verse number 20, he's talking about the place which I have prepared. It is representing the will of God where he'll use us. See, we've got to learn uh, to follow the, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit as he's guiding us. We've got to learn to live a righteous life uh, 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 as he readies us, and then the will of God will be manifested in which God will use us to bring honor and glory to his name. We've seen a principle set before them, a picture displayed from them, but notice the promise guaranteed to them. Look at verse uh, 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. Can I say this first of all? If God's an enemy to our enemies, what do we have anything to fear about? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hmm? Uh, if God's an adversary to our adversaries, you don't have a thing to worry about. Uh, nobody's even challenged God, let alone defeated him. But he goes on to verse 23, and he says, For mine angels shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, and cut them off. What a blessing. Hmm? Well, I got to thinking about this promise guarantee. He said, if you obey my voice, he said, I'll take care of all your enemies. Hmm? But notice these nations of people, these tribes of people that they will fight against when they get into Canaan land. And God gives them the secret to success, obedience to the voice of God, will defeat their enemies. The Amorites is a picture or a type of bitterness and rebellion. When you're obedient to God, God will defeat any bitterness that wells up in your life, any rebellion in your camp. Can I say, any given week, the devil's trying to stir up somebody with bitterness to rebel and divide the house of God. But when God's people are obedient, God overcomes that. The Hittites represents one that's broken or one that's fearful. Can I say what a overcome any brokenness or fear is the Lord when we're obedient. The Parasites, uh, they kind of represent those that are dwellers they just dwell on you 
They're takers. They'll suck the very life out of you. And I've seen that in churches. There are some who just absolutely take, 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 take. And it absolutely upsets the congregation. Can I say I've known of congregations where they'll get a young man who sells insurance. And he makes it a point to address everybody in the church, make an appointment, try to sell them insurance, and when he's exhausted that, he changes churches. He's not interested in worshiping Jesus Christ. He's interested in putting some coins in his pocket. And can I say there are others, uh, if the church is ever good to them, helps them out, maybe gets them some groceries, do something for them, well, then it seems like they always have a need. Hmm? You know, it's a blessing to be a part of a church. If somebody's struggling, we can help them. But can I say, the church is not a perpetual food bank. Mm. And I've learned a long time ago that anybody can go through a rough patch. But if they put God first, God will help them. And they won't stay in a rough patch. If somebody stays in a rough patch, they've got a real problem somewhere in their life. Mm. Well, the Lord says he'll handle all that if we're obedient. And can I say, there's the Canaanites. Mm. The Canaanites is represents one who will humble you or subdue you. Humble by meaning conquering you. Subdue you. Let's say the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. If Jesus came, then we might have life and have it more abundantly. When we're obedient, you don't have to worry about somebody overtaking the congregation. I'll never forget that fellow we was out on visitation a couple years ago. He called up and said he was coming to church and was going to take over. I said, no, you won't. He said, you're going to stop me? I said, we'll stop you. He said, you better have the law there, because I'm a coming. I said, that's okay, I know. He said, you know all of them? I said, I know enough of them. I don't know if he showed up or not, because uh, that Sunday morning I had Christian Jordan stand out in front of the door out there. I mean, that was enough to deter him right there, uh, you know. But the bottom line is, nobody's coming in and taking over when we're serving God. Hmm? Just be obedient to God. He handles all that. He can handle blowhards and all that. Hmm? Then there's the Hivites. The Hivites are the wicked or wickedness. And listen, not everybody comes to church, comes to church to serve God. There are actually some that come with wicked motivation. But if you just keep your eyes on Jesus and you put Jesus first, he handles all that. And then the Jebusites, that's one who trods underfoot. Uh, but I'm glad. We don't have to worry about somebody trodden us underfoot when we're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. The last thing that he says to Moses, he gives them a precaution. There's a precaution given to them. Verse 24, he says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their gods, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Notice that God told them not to bow down to the false gods of that land. Matter of fact, take their idols and break them up, burn them, do away with them. He said, and if you serve me, he said, I'll bless your bread, I'll bless your water, and I'll take sickness away from you. You know what would help America with all this COVID stuff? we just start serving God. If we broke down the idols of this world, if we did away with the false gods of this world, uh, if we put, cut, put in confidence uh, in uh, 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 Fauci and all these other people and we put our confidence in the Lord and we started serving God, uh, can I help you with something? Uh, 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 God would take away all the sickness of this world. Hmm? I believe that. Matter of fact, I told Miss Annette this. I said, I don't know how we could pull it off because you can't get two Baptists together on anything. But just think if we could get all the people that name the name of Christ. Everybody in Christianity in America, I'm talking about every stripe. If we could get them all to make up their mind, they're going to stand against the wickedness being thrown at us. I don't know if you notice it. Uh, I, I'm seeing it on commercials where now they, they're showing two husbands with children. Uh, we're showing two women looking to buy a house together with their dog. Uh, I wonder if all, all folks that name the name of Christ said, uh, if you support abortion and if you support homosexuality, we're not buying any of your goods. You know what would happen? Within a month, you'd never see another ad about homosexuals. Within a month, 
you'd never hear about abortion again in America. If we would stand up and say, we're not going to follow any mandates of man, we're following the mandates of the Lord, uh, 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 friend, within a month you wouldn't see another mask. Uh, within a month you wouldn't have uh, uh, any press conferences about uh, a- anything else that the government thinks that we need to know about. You know what we'd find? Uh, we'd find a, c- a country, once again, for the people, by the people, uh, and we'd find a nation that, once again, uh, would say the Lord is God, the Lord is God. But how in the world do we pull it off when you got Catholics who are strong against abortion still voting people in office who support abortion? Hmm? Uh, Joe Biden claims to be a faithful practicing Catholic and he's the first to sign law for abortion. Hmm? That's all you need to know. Uh, Don't listen to what they say. Watch their actions. Look at their patterns. But if there was some way we could pull off everybody that claims to be a Christian to just live Christ-like, we'd put an end to a lot of foolishness going on in this country. I'm reminded, having done all to stand, stand there for. God help us, huh? I'm interested in verse number 20. Verse number 20, he says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes this evening on there is a way. There is a way. Now we know John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And because we know the way, Jesus Christ, there is a way for you and I to live a better life. You don't have to live by the rudiments of this world. You don't have to succumb uh, 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 to all the ungodliness in this world, uh, all the false teachings, all the false philosophies, all the things that bring people down. Uh, uh, If you listen to the narrative of the day, uh, the narrative of the day says that every white person's a racist. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm up to here with that. Hmm? I'm getting tired of being prejudiced against. They're prejudging me. I've never had one of them call and ask me, are you racist? But they'll label me one. Mm -mm. Can I help you with something? I don't know. Anybody watch NFL football? You know, a couple years ago, it was all bow the knee when the national anthem was being played. My philosophy is if you don't support the national anthem, go go to another country. I don't care. Uh, You know, uh, they're only making millions of dollars playing a sport, a game. Huh? Never one of them has ever worked a 40-hour week job, and yet they're making millions of dollars, and they want to disrespect our, our flag. They want to wear socks uh, di- disregarding our police force for showing pigs on their socks. Mm-mm. By the way, which was against the NFL policy. If they didn't uh, match the same uniform, then they would be fined. But they, the NFL cowered to them. Mm-mm. I'm sick to death of that. But I don't know if you've, you've watched any NFL this, this year. I've noticed it in the last few weeks. If you're watching a game, there'll be a commercial come on, and it's uh, all these young black folks, and there's a young black man says, uh, uh, in his neighborhood, uh, a white man makes $10,000 more a year than he makes doing the same job. You know what? They're pushing race. Race. White people are evil. White people make more money. White people uh, treat themselves better than they treat us hogwash. Uh, matter of fact, because of affirmative action, black folks get a upper hand than white folks. Mm, but yet, they won't bring that up. Mm. It's amazing. This kind of teaching is destroying our country. Critical race theory. All kinds of things that are being flushed through our school systems that have nothing to do with reading, writing, and arithmetic. Matter of fact, most kids coming out of school can't read. They can't write in cursive anymore. They print everything or they do this. And they certainly can't do arithmetic. I've yet to meet a cashier at uh, uh, McDonald's that can count my change back. If it doesn't give them a number up on the computer, the, the cash register, they don't know how much money I'm owed. And heaven help you, if you if your bill's $9.05 and you give them a 10 and a 5, it blows their mind. They, they, they don't know. You give them a 10 and a nickel, they don't know what to do. Hey, give me a buck back, buddy. That's all you got to do. Just a dollar. They're counting out 75 cents and then another. They don't know. Why? 
because they're being told we're racist, but they're not being taught how to add. Mm -mm. God help us. But I'm glad there is a way that you and I can live a victorious life. We can live a blessed life. We can live a life of success in Christ that regardless of all the garbage being dumped on us, we can still rise above it. I got to thinking about there is a way of contentment. Mm. With all the turmoil and all the rage and all the disgust in the world, isn't it a blessing to have peace in your soul? There is a way of contentment. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter who's in the, in the Capitol. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, 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 what mandate comes next. It don't matter what variant comes next. It don't matter anything that goes on in this world. You can have contentment in your soul knowing everything's right between you and God. There is a way. Because of the way, Jesus Christ, you can have contentment. I'm thankful for a way of contentment. I'm thankful for a way of compliance. I'm glad that God made a way that wasn't so difficult that we couldn't follow Him. I'm glad there's a way that we can comply with Him. I'm glad He made it so easy that even a child could understand. And I'm glad that, my dear friends, He made a way uh, uh, that's easy for you and I to comply with Him. Uh, hey, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard, uh, but the way of Jesus Christ is life and peace. Uh, and He made a way, it's very simple, uh, where we can seek Him first uh, and where we can follow His Word uh, and where we can uh, uh, call on Him and where we can walk with Him. Uh, and friend, it makes sense to those who've trusted in him. You know, the unchurched crowd, they don't understand our way. But I'm glad he made a way that regardless of your education level, regardless of your address, regardless of your upbringing, regardless of anything that has ever befallen your life, you can still follow Jesus. He made a way. He's no respecter of persons. I'm glad there is a way of contentment a way of compliance. I'm glad there's a way of conquering. I'm glad you do not have to succumb to the flesh. I'm glad there were more than conquerors in Him that loved us. Uh, I'm glad that there's neither uh, 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 principalities or angels or any other thing that can separate us from the love of God. Uh, I'm glad He made a way where you and I can overcome anything that comes our way. I'm thankful for that. Uh, wouldn't it be a sad commentary of the Bible where only certain people could overcome? Hmm? Only people whose address ends in an odd number rather than an even number? Or in whatever standard? Aren't you glad He made a way where all could come to Him? Aren't you glad He made a way where all can overcome? What a blessing! It all comes down to putting Him first and trusting in Him. I'm glad He made a way of compassion. This world's full of hate. You don't believe that? Friend, you've been not paying attention for a while. If you wear a Trump hat, people will hate you. Hmm? Now, I can understand if you wear a Steelers hat, people will hate you. Huh? Huh? What do you mean, no? You're West Virginian. That's because you don't even have a team. When you don't have a team, you have to vote for them. Huh? Huh? In Kentucky, we don't want a team. Uh, but listen, isn't it a sad commentary that if you just wear something that somebody doesn't agree with, they'll hate you? I thought this was America. I thought where you was allowed to be a free thinker. You was allowed in liberty to choose whatever you want to choose. No. And heaven help you if you're unvaccinated. You're the Antichrist if you're unvaccinated. Hmm? Now, if you want to get a vaccine, get a vaccine. I don't care. You can get all three of them. It's still not going to protect you. You can still get sick. You do know that, don't you? Uh, and you can get all three of them and uh, uh, still spread it to other people, you know. Now, listen, listen. If I got a polio vaccine and then got another one and then got a booster and then got polio, I'd be ticked off. But people have gotten all three of these things and they're still getting sick and they're not mad. They haven't figured it out. You've been lied to. A vaccine's supposed to keep you from getting whatever you're getting vaccinated against. 
I went and got the shingles vaccine because I saw them commercials and saw how nasty that stuff looked. And I'm thinking, I look nasty enough. I don't need that nasty on me, huh? I went and got a shingles vaccine. I didn't want it, huh? I had to get two of them. You got a first one, then you got a second one. I got it. Why? Because I didn't want that stuff, huh? But listen, the whole thing about this deal, it normally takes five or six years of very strenuous testing to see whether a vaccine's worth bringing to market. They did this thing in nine months. Hmm? You can be a guinea pig if you want to, but don't look at me and hate me because I choose not to be a guinea pig. Hmm? Uh, I thought America was to be a, a, a country where there's no discrimination. Isn't that what the ACLU for? No discrimination on the job? Isn't that what the civil rights movement was? No discrimination in, the, uh, uh, in society? But yet, you can be vaccined, vaccinated, get COVID, and go right back to work. But if you're unvaccinated, you've got to get tested every single day before you're allowed to work. That sounds like discrimination to me. I'm not the brightest light bulb in a bunch. But that doesn't seem like a, a, an equal playing field. How come the ACLU isn't jumping up questioning this? I mean, uh, 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 the mandate was thrown out of, of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled against it last week. Why aren't they uh, 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 somebody suing on account of that? Because there's no money in it. By the way, I don't, well, I'm already here. I've already ticked off somebody. So let me make you real good and mad. Fauci's the highest paid government employee. 400000 a year. Makes more than the president. It came out this weekend that he invested last year $10.4 million. How does a man make $400,000 but he can uh, invest $10.4 million. That's not how much he kept, Eddie. That's how much he invested. Uh, that was his throwaway money. Uh, how did he do that? Because Pfizer and Moderna paid him. How many millions did they pay him? Mm -mm. Just follow the money. He's a crook. He lied before Congress. It's been proven over and over and over again. He's lied. Why isn't he in jail? Because the same people put him in jail, they're on the take too. Huh? I'm just thankful that there is a way of compassion for our lives. Even though the world will hate you, even though the world will label you, even though there are people that will never agree with you, even though there are some that think we're a, a, a terrorist in our land, there's still a way of compassion. God loves us, and He's done us such a change in our heart that we can love our enemies. Mm. I'm glad there's a way. Can you imagine if Christianity is what the Catholic faith showed during the Dark Ages, where you be like us or we will destroy you and conquer you? That's not Christianity. Christianity is whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. Christianity is we love him because he first loved us and because he has forgiven us, we'll forgive you. Christianity is a religion of love. There is a way. There's a way of communion. I'm glad I don't have to hope to see if I get to go to heaven. I'm glad I talk to Jesus every day. I commune with him every day. There is a way where I can have a relationship with God Almighty and speak and walk with him every single day. There is a way of communion through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, thank the Lord, there is a way of clarity. Do you ever look around this world and think, why do people don't get it? How they can't look around and see all this chaos is leading to the fact the Lord's coming? Do you ever wonder why there are smart people that are so dumb? Hmm? Really? I imagine if you go by educational level, some of these people in Congress are supposed to be smart, but they're morons. Huh? But did you ever wonder why just common people can, can come to know God and study the Word of God and look around and see everything for what it really is. 
Why is that? Because there's a way of clarity. The sweet Holy Spirit inside you that leads you and guides you into all truth is not only the truth in the Scriptures, but He lets you see in perspective what's really going on. He gives you clarity. And thank the Lord for that. Now, how can we capitalize on this way? How's it found? Because there are a lot of people seeking for a lot of things, but they just don't know how to find it. People are seeking for contentment. They're looking in the wrong places. People are seeking for clarity, but they're looking in the wrong places. People are seeking for compassion, but they're looking in the wrong places. How is this way found? What's well, found through the Lord Jesus Christ? But knowing Him as Lord and Savior does not give you simple access to all these things. They're developed in you. And they're developed in you through discernment. See, the more that you come to study the Lord Jesus and read about the Lord Jesus and walk with the Lord Jesus and talk with the Lord Jesus, the more you come to know His voice. And listen, Miss Annette and I have been married, soon to be 33 years. I know she's got a special crown in heaven. I know her a lot better now than I did when we first got married. Matter of fact, I could tell real quick when she's real aggravated with me. We used to. I didn't know for about a week. Huh? There, there are things you learn over time. You learn about. Well, the same thing with the Lord. If you are constantly walking with Him and talking with Him and in communion and fellowship with Him, you will learn to discern His will and His voice for your life. He said, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Now, there are some people when they first get saved, they don't know the voice of the Lord because they're just, still just excited about being saved, but they don't understand it. And then there are some who've been saved a long time, but they haven't really walked with God. They still don't discern His voice. The way is found through discernment, through discerning whether or not it's God saying it or someone else. But it's not only through discernment, it's found through discipline. In every facet of your life, you need discipline. When you drive your car, you've got to be disciplined. You can either drive like Rhonda Ruby, or you can follow the laws. You know, stop signs are not optional. Uh, the red, green, yellow light does not mean punch it, it's time to go, quarter mile, see how fast you can get there, huh? No, you, you've got to discipline yourself to follow the driving rules. On your job, your boss will set forth certain rules. As long as you follow the rules, you'll get a paycheck at the end of the week. If you don't follow the rules, you're subject to losing your job. Hmm? Can I say in a marriage, Donald, Crystal set down the law. You better obey it or you'll be out sleeping in the doghouse. That's the way it works, huh? But in every facet of our lives, there's discipline. Hmm? I disciplined myself for a cruise. I was really on the take of eating and eating and eating. So when I got to the cruise, I was well conditioned for all the food they would shove down my face, only to find out the cruise was going to be canceled. And now I got all this extra weight. I got to do something with it, huh? But I'll work it off. Hmm? Oh, you got to discipline yourself. If you don't discipline yourself, you have no constraints in your life. Your life's going to be an absolute mess. The same way in the Christian life. If you let your flesh reign, you're going to be in a mess. But if you learn to discipline and let your inner man rule the outer man, you'll have a blessed life. And then it's also found through desires. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. How much do you seek him? How much do you desire the Lord in your life? Some people are satisfied just with a little bit of the Lord. There are some people who can't get enough. Your desire leads to how much of the Lord you're going to have in your life. Hmm? Uh, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. If you want the Lord in your life, and you want the blessings of God in your life, you ask for Him and you seek Him, you'll find Him. But if... You're satisfied with an appetizer, you'll never get to the main meal. Hmm? 
You know what an appetizer is? It whets your appetite for the best. You know what salad is? Salad is a disgrace. Hmm. Huh? All lettuce does is tears you up. That's rabbit food. Uh, the main course is where you're headed. That's what you want. The entree. And it's supposed to be so good that you get some dessert at the end of it. And I say some people are so satisfied with lettuce when they can have the main course from the Lord. When you can feast off the bounty of the Lord. And the Lord's so good, after you feast on the bounty of the Lord, He just throws some dessert on top of it. Huh? I pick my restaurants based on the dessert. You know that, don't you? Uh, Jeff Ruby's, you can get a hunk of meat that will satisfy you like no other meat. But it just leads you to get the, the gooey pie at the end, man. The butter pie, that, that stuff right there, that'll be in heaven. Hmm? I always pick my restaurants based on the dessert. The reason we go to the Cheesecake Factory is not for the main meal. What I'm trying to say is, if you seek the Lord, He'll give you Himself and then some on top of it. And friend, there's nothing like it. I'm glad there is a way. We live in a day and age where it looks like there is no hope. Hogwash. Lord's still on the throne. There's hope. Hmm? Uh, get your eyes off of what's going on all around you. And get your eyes on Jesus. And then whatever's going on all around you will not deter you. Because you'll find Him. And He trumps any way around you any day of the week. God help us to look and see there is a way. My dear friend, maybe you're here tonight you don't know Him. You'll never find the way of contentment without knowing Him. We want to give you that opportunity to come to know Him. Maybe you're here tonight, you know Him. And you just want to be thankful that you're in the way. Once you come, tell the Lord you're thankful. You sing that old song, I'm in the way, the glory land way. Thanks be unto God, there is a way that you can live your life in and find joy and peace and love and contentment. Maybe tonight the Lord spoke to your heart about something else. You've got to do business with God. That's what the altars are open for. So, oh, you ought to be thankful for the way. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. If he spoke to your heart, you just mind God during this invitation. You'll leave out blessed by being obedient. Folks are coming. He's picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Lord, you gave Israel instruction, Lord, as they was getting ready to enter the promised land. And I'm glad you give your people today instruction to help us regardless of what we may face. Lord, I know we live in a world that's gone crazy, gone insane. It's hard to make sense of a lot of it. But God, I'm glad you're still on the throne. And God, I'm glad you still help your people. I'm still glad you lead and guide us into all truth. Now, Father, bless this invitation. Lord, if there's somebody lost, I pray they get saved. Lord, if there's folks that are hurting, I pray you'd heal them. If there's folks, God, that are seeking, I pray they'd find in Christ. God, have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.